Hello everybody and welcome to a new video about using FreeCAD to generate G-code for your CNC. In this episode I'm going to talk about the VCARP operation using it to engrave text on certain objects. And since the last video that I made, FreeCAD 1.0, the official version, the stable version, has been released. Starting from now I'm going to use this version. The first thing that I want to do is define the shape of the piece that I'm going to engrave. So in the part design workbench, let's create a new body create a new sketch on the XY plane. I'm going to draw the projection on the XY plane. I will select the rectangle tool. First, let me change the mouse pointer. I will use a larger and yellow mouse pointer so you can easily see what I'm doing. I will hover the mouse to the origin until it is slightly lighter and drag the mouse after clicking. Now I can write the dimensions. I'm going to use a 100 millimeters by 100 millimeters block of wood. You can see here in the solver messages window that the sketch is fully constrained. I can close it. Going back to the model, I can see the body that I have created and the sketch inside it. So with the sketch selected, click on this button, which is pad, and I will pad it for 10 millimeters. That is the height of the block of wood that I'm going to engrave. Now I will change the perspective view. I think everything looks a little bit better this way. And now let's create the text. But before moving on, I want to thank everybody that's supporting me, be it through likes, shares, comments, or through my Patreon page, through a subscription, or through a one-time thank you. And of course, if you need help at any point, if you want to learn the FreeCAD CAM Workbench, you can book one-on-one -on -one sessions on my Patreon page. Or if you need help with a certain project, also the one-on-one -on -one sessions are the answer. We can solve things together and you will know how to do things properly. So let's go to the Draft Workbench and select this tool, which is Shape from Text. Of course, you can invoke the option from the menu, but it's much easier from the toolbox. So click on it. And here is the first really, really annoying thing in FreeCAD. You don't have a system font dialog as in any other software. Whenever creating text, you have to select the font file. And you can do that by clicking on these three little dots, going to a folder where you have true type fonts. I have them separately. I could go also to the Windows fonts folder, but I prefer to keep the fonts that I'm using in FreeCAD separately. So let's select the dancing script font for now. Click on the open button and let's type a text, which is going to be open source. CNC. I will leave the height at 10 millimeters. We will see after we click on OK how it will look and we can adjust the dimensions. Click on the OK button and you can see the text here. It is in a very weird position. It was the position of the viewport. In order to snap the text to this face, I will make sure the shape string is selected. Go to map mode and click on the three little dots besides deactivated. And then I can select this face. You can see it snapping there. Click on the OK button. And from now on, no matter where this face is going to be, the text will be snapping to that face. For example, if I change the dimension of the pad, let's say I have a 20 millimeters thick piece of wood. After clicking OK, you can see the text snapped back to the face, to the top face of the object. Now let's modify it back again to 10 millimeters. But as you can see, there's a little bit of a problem. The text goes out of the piece of wood. For this, I will show you how to move the object around on that face. It's a little bit tricky. A lot of people have problem with setting the position. And that is because I have some confusing things here. As you can see, I have the placement where I can change the position, but not in this situation. As you can see, they are grayed out. I also have the attachment offset. So for anything that is attached to something else, you will have to modify the position from the attachment offset, not the position from placement. Now let's go here and modify the Y, bring it a little bit higher. Also move it to the right by changing the X. And now everything should be okay. I have my text here and let's create the G code to engrave this piece of text on the piece of wood that we defined. For that, of course, we have to go to the CAM workbench. I have my workbenches here. I can easily select them by just clicking the tab. If you don't have them here, you most probably have a drop down somewhere up here. You can select the workbench from there, of course. And after moving to the CAM workbench, I will select the body, hold control down and select the shape string. Then click on this button, which is job. In this menu, I can select a template, which I won't be doing now because I don't have a template for V carving. I don't have a template with a tool bit for V carving selected. So we will manually set up everything in the job. Then if I'm going to make a lot of other projects, similar to this one, I can of course save the template. I have another video about that. You can 
check the video about the CNC jobs there I explain exactly how to use templates why are they good and how to set them up and use them after making sure the body and the shape string are selected click on the ok button and why do I select the body even though the shape string is correctly placed let me show you why if I unselect the body and click on the ok button there's no job created and if you happen to have the report view you will see a lot of red text the last line is the one that is important height of box too small that is because the shape string is a 2d object no matter if it's placed at 20 millimeters high it will try to create a bounding box for this object which has absolutely no height this means it won't be able to create a new job of course it would be a lot nicer to have a pop-up window to let me know what's happening maybe i have the report view turned off maybe i don't really understand all this text in this situation a lot of people tend to blame it on freecut which is kind of true and close the program move to another program even pay for other programs so try to remember that whenever you have something weird happening try to take a look at these errors maybe there's something that you can understand sometimes there isn't but in certain situations you can understand what's happening so now let's select the body and the shape string again holding the control button create a new job make sure they are both selected and click on the ok button you can see now I have the dialog for the job creation open because the bounding box, the extend models bounding box, the option for the stock is a 3D object, it has a height. After creating the job in this dialog, I'm just going to select the proper tool bit, go to the tools tab here at the top and click on the add button. From the list of tool bits that I have, I will select the vCarve tool bit. If you don't have the tool bit already created, check my video about creating tool bits. It was intended for FreeCAD 0.21, but you can safely use the same method for FreeCAD 1.0 since everything is almost identical. And from this list, I'm going to select the 60 degree V bit click on the open button and now I have it here in my list. What I need to do is set some horizontal and vertical speeds and of course a spindle speed. That is because the tool bit definitions in FreeCAD don't allow for preset feed speeds and spindle speed, which I think is a bad thing. I think it might be very useful to allow me to set predefined values for the tool bits. So let's set some speeds. I will use 3000 both for horizontal and vertical feed speed. This depends a lot on the machine, on the material that you are going to mill, on the depth of cut of the layers on the step down value and of course it depends a lot on the spindle speed which i'm going to set to 18,500 rpm and now i can select the default tool and remove it this is a useless tool it's just there so the job can be created the next thing that i want to do is set the output the output file which by clicking on these three little dots and going to the folder that you want to save the g-code let's give it a name so it's vcarve operation click on the save button well it doesn't work this way because I have to set an extension. I cannot select it from the save as type drop down. I only have all files, so I have to give it an extension. I'm going to use .gcode and then click on the save button. Now I have everything set up so I can export the file to the location that I want to export it. I'm not going to change any other option here. The processor is going to be GRBL because that is what my machine is based on. Of course, if you have a different machine, you will have to select the proper post processor. And if you have certain issues with some of the post processors, you have some refactored versions of them which are supposed to be better. I haven't seen too many differences between them. But if you are having issues with the post processor, try using the refactored version if there is such a post processor. So I'm going to leave it as GRBL. And that is all that I set up in this dialog, in the job edit dialog. Click on the OK button and now the job is created. One thing that you need to know is... As you can see here in the tree, the body and the shape string that the job is based on are grayed out, which means they are not visible in the 3D viewport. What is visible is the models in the job. That's kind of weird because here you can see the model group, which is also grayed out, but the objects inside it are visible. So if you want to find the objects, you have to open this model. This is a little bit unintuitive, but once you get used to it, you will know what to do each time. Now, let's select the shape string, go here to the menu, click on this little arrow and select the vCarve operation. The good thing about the vCarve operation is the fact that the default settings work in 99% of the cases. 
well in the cases that do actually work because you will find out that there are a lot of situations a lot of fonts actually that is the problem the fonts there are a lot of situations when vcar doesn't work or you have to make a lot of adjustments if you want to know some tricks for modifying the fonts you can check the video about vcar in 0.21 a lot of those tricks that i've used in that video are still working in 1.0 or of course you can ask me in a comment if you have some issues so now i can simply click on the apply button it takes a little bit of time to generate the vcar toolpath but it's not a really long time as you can see it's already done and now i can click on the ok button let's select the job and use the new cam simulator and i won't press the play button i will just scroll this to the end as you can see i have some problems it doesn't look as it should close the simulator and let's see why does this happen you can see here if i set a front view with an orthographic view you can see that the toolbit is actually moving above of the work area above the material that i have to mill and that is not because of some settings in the vcarve operation i cannot modify the depth and that's a good thing what is preventing the toolbit from entering the material is a setting of the toolbit if i go to the tools tab here and the second drop down double click on the actual shape that defines the toolbit will open a dialog box here i have all the settings for the toolbit as you can see i have a tip diameter setting here which means the diameter of this circle here i have a tip diameter of one millimeter but my toolbit is actually pointy it's a 0.01 millimeters i will set it this way so after modifying the tip diameter clicking on the ok button and everything will recompute again it will take a little bit of time now if i go back to the simulator you can already see the shape of the toolbit it's now really pointy which means it will be able to mill all these lines even though they are narrower than one millimeter that is why it wasn't milling the material in the setup with the initial toolbit because the line was thinner than one millimeter which was the diameter of the tip of the toolbit so now let's select the job again click on the simulator and click on the play button i will again scroll this to the end everything now is exactly as it should be now let's export the g-code let's create a g-code file and then we will be able to move on to the cnc and mill this simple text so for that i will select the job and click this button which is post process i can inspect the g-code before moving on to the machine of course there are a lot of lines i'm using grbl which tends to stick to the basic commands to g0 and g1 so almost all the time you'll have a very long file but that's not a problem for me click on the ok button you can see it automatically selected the folder and the file name i can click on the save button and the file is now saved i can go to universal g code sender open the file connect the machine and do the milling now let me show you what happens when you try to modify things around which sometimes works sometimes doesn't let's go to the shape string and try to modify the font first so double click on the shape string go to these three little dots again and let's select another font the new amsterdam regular font click on the open button click on ok as you can see everything is okay for this font because it's a very simple font so this tends to be pretty easy in certain situations but what i recommend is every time after changing the font go to the job and go to the simulator just to make sure all the letters are there there are no odd things happening as you can see everything is okay now i will click on the close button and change the shape string again to modify the font file so i can show you what i mean click on the open button click on ok again you will see that for this particular font there will be some errors first of all you can see that the e letter is not milled at all both e letters the rest of the text is correctly set up in the vcarve operation but again the text is too wide so i will have to modify the shape string again and let's change the height to eight millimeters i think this should do it this should allow the text to fit on the piece of wood that i have this is one of the reasons i generally try to replicate the real life pieces that i'm going to mill using a body and a sketch to define the shape because i like to make sure everything fits as it should on the piece that i'm going to mill and now if i select the job and go to the simulator click on the play button scroll to the end you can see that the two e letters are missing 
that is because of this overlapping here and it will happen a lot with a lot of fonts this is a point where i tend to stop searching for solutions if i really have to there are some solutions but they are pretty complicated i just like to go and find a similar font which is better defined this is how you can engrave text using the vcarve operation using a vbit on a piece of wood or any other material using freecad 1.0 thank you for watching and see you next time